face. Traveler. Missionary. <laughs> yep. Speech. Speech. Praise <laughs> <Bridge> report. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> <laughs> Naomi, we acknowledge Naomi Rupp. Uh, Amen. Yes. Is there anything you'd like to say, Naomi? Yes. Well, like to say is, is it's such a tricky word. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. It is. Uh, well, where am I supposed to be? Amen. Yeah. 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 Good. Yeah. It took a while though, didn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> For the time being, I'm supposed to be up there, and that's where I'm supposed to be, so. Amen. Amen. Good spot. Praise the Lord. Always a good spot to be led by God. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Those who are led by the Holy Spirit, these are the sons of God. Yes. Or daughters. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they call me a bride, I can call you a son. Amen. <laughs> 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 right? Yeah. So, it, um, so, Lord, we thank you for your word. I thank you for Naomi's testimony that goes right along with what's going on here. I thank you, Lord, for the testimonies that have come forth here today already have fit right in with what you're doing. Oh. God, they've gone along with the songs. They've gone along with what you, your prophetic word was in prayer. We praise you today, God, because you are still on the throne and we're following you today. Mm -hmm. Just like Naomi, we are led by the Holy Ghost. Therefore, yep. we are the sons and the daughters of God. Mm -hmm. yep. Thank you, God. Thank you. We humble ourselves before you, Lord, and have your way in this place. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. I was thinking this week of, uh, of teachers. And who, who is a teacher? Okay? So in John 20, verse 16, Jesus has just risen from the dead, just got out of the tomb, Mary's outside the tomb, boo-hooing. <laughs> Hallelujah. She sees inside of the tomb some bright and shining creatures. And she said, hey, where, where's the Lord? And then she says, in 15, she says, um, now in 15, 14, it says, now when she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there and did not know that it was Jesus. Hallelujah. So she perceived that a man was there, but she didn't perceive that it was Jesus. And Jesus said to him, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you seeking? She, supposing him to be the gardener, said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. In other words, little bitty Mary is going to carry Jesus' body away. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, she is not thinking very good here, otherwise she would have recognized that. Watch this. And Jesus said to her, Mary, she certain said to him, Rabboni which is to say, teacher. Now Jesus is there, and the first thing Mary says to him is, teacher. Now one thing we saw about Mary, when her and Martha were in the same room, Martha was busy about doing and serving and things like that, Mary is sitting at the feet of Jesus, yes. listening to him. In other words, I imagine in my own thoughts that Jesus is a fairly good teacher. Yes, yes. absolutely. Hallelujah. So if you're going to listen to somebody teach, you might as well listen to Jesus. That's right. Hallelujah. And, and Jesus said, hey, this is the best part. She has chosen the best part. It's not going to be taken away from her just to get up and serve tables. Now i got to eat, so Martha, you stay busy. No, that's not what he said. <laughs> <laughs> now, in 21... In the 15th verse, it says, When they had eaten breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me more than these? And he said to him, Lord, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. And he said to him, feed my lambs. Now watch this. Jesus said, do you agape me? And Peter answered him with an honest heart and says, yes, I phileo you. In other words, I adore you, I respect you, I love you, but I don't agape you. It ain't, it ain't in me yet. Hallelujah. That unconditional overflowing love. Because Peter knew what he had done. Yes, of course. Okay? He yeah. knew his failings. He knew his shortcomings. 
So he's unable at that point in time to say, I agape you, I, I, I have that kind of love. Now, in his future letters that he wrote, he used agape a bunch of times. Okay, because so he got a revelation of what agape was. Praise the Lord. Now watch this. And he said to him a second time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. And he said to him, tend to my sheep. And he said to him a third time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? And Peter, Peter was grieved because he said to him a third time, do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. And Jesus said to him, feed my lambs, or feed my sheep. Now in all these things, he said, feed my lambs, feed my sheep, feed my sheep. In other words, be a pastor to these people that are all around you. Be some sort of a shepherd. Lead them somewhere. Teach them the right things. We used to have a, 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 what do you call it, a food bank or food distribution place called Feed My Sheep. That was what it was when it was out in the yard here. I remember we had, that was what the food bank is. Now it's called Living Faith uh, Food Pantry. It yes. used to be called Feed My Sheep. And then it was nothing, and then it was something, and then it was something else, and then it was nothing, and then it was, now it's food bank. Praise the Lord. So, in the 21st chapter, the 19th verse, we read this. And he spoke signifying by which death he would glorify God. And when he had spoken this, he said to him, follow me. Now watch this, watch this. This is good. So, then Peter, turning around, saw a disciple whom Jesus loved following, who also had leaned on his breast at supper and said, Lord, who is the one who betrays you? And Peter, seeing him, said to Jesus, But Lord, what about this man? And he said to him, If I will that he remains till I come, what is that to you? You follow me. Praise the Lord. So we see here that Jesus <coughs> is not interested in what you think about other people. Right. And what their walk is and what you think they ought to be doing right. or anything else like that. Right. What you need to do is yeah. you follow the Lord. Yes. Yes. He's calling us not only to follow him, but to lead people in the way that they should go. Yeah. Okay? Praise the Lord. Now in 2 Timothy, the second chapter, this is really fun. 2 Timothy, the second chapter, and I get to read these two. This is just a great book, 2 Timothy. It says in 2.24, uh, 2 Timothy 2.24 says, And a servant of the Lord must not quarrel, quarrel, but be gentle to all, able to teach, and patient. Now, who in here is a servant of the Lord? <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah. So, the Bible says right here, that a servant of the Lord must not quarrel, but be gentle to all, able to teach, and patient. Not only teachable, but able to teach others also. We, I think we had more love when we knew less. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Knowledge, I wrote down here, knowledge of Scripture is not, a, is not acquired so that we can argue with those who differ in their knowledge, <laughs> it's not there for us to shake our heads at them and say, oh, those poor suckers, you know. It's not to uh, shut them out mentally when they begin to speak the, other than what we believe. That's right. We are to be open in our hearts towards people who say things. I don't care if they're saying things that don't agree with you. Now, now watch what I'm saying. Yes, knowledge does divide, but not from your brothers in Christ. Right. Okay? Knowledge divides us from the world system of darkness and evil, yes. yes. But it does not divide us from the, those in the body of Christ which we disagree with. Now, if somebody's saying something that you dis, don't necessarily believe, like they do, mm -hmm. don't put up your self-righteous nose at them or, or shun them or shut off your ears to them. Listen to them. That's right. Listen to what they're saying and find out where they're actually coming from. Maybe they're coming from a place of deep pain that you can help them with. Yes. Rather than just saying, well, I don't believe that. You should be saying that. You know? It's a good word. Yes, yeah. it is. Yeah, no. Otherwise, we're just divided from people. Yeah. Things divide. If you're doing something that divides, don't divide. Try to find a way to unite. Now the Bible does say, come away from the world, but come together in Jesus' name. That's right. It's important. Now in the 14th verse of that same chapter, it says, Remind them of these things, charging them before the Lord, not to strive about words, 
to no profit to the ruin of the he hearers. Be diligent to present yourself approved of God, a worker who does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. There it comes to teaching again. Yes. Hallelujah. See that? Present yourself approved to God, a worker. He says, a servant of the Lord shall be apt to teach. I want you to know, to study is work. I just thought I'd throw that in. You might like it, but it's still work. Praise the Lord. I work every week at this stuff. And it, it is work. Sometimes I'd rather go out and pound nails. Seriously. Sometimes I'd rather just go serve at the food pantry. Sometimes I'd rather do something else. Sometimes I'd just rather come and pray for a while. When God called me, he said, I didn't call you to pray at this point in time. I called you to study. Now, it goes in the same respect. If God calls you to pray, don't be studying. You just pop your knowledge out there somewhere where you get so big-headed, you won't, you know. You had, yeah. Like I said, you had, more, you had more love when you knew less. Remember when you preached to everybody you saw because you just didn't love them? Yes. I remember Frank and Irma in, in Real Christian Fellowship thought I was stoned all the time. Because yeah. <laughs> I hugged everybody that came into the place. 600 people every week. Yeah. That's a lot of people to hug. Praise the Lord. So the power of the gospel is to bring hope to the ungodly and those trapped in their own tenacious trying but inability to keep the law. That was a good statement, I let me say it again. The power of the gospel is to bring hope to the ungodly and to those trapped in their own tenacious trying but inability to keep the law. Yes. Everybody's trying to do this and trying to, I'm trying to keep my act together, etc., etc., okay? We've got to watch it because the gospel will set us free from those kind of things. In Galatians 6.13, I'm just going to turn to all these scriptures. It's hard for me to turn to them and keep my finger in the right place all the time. Galatians 6 13. Oh, this is this is gonna be good. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Where am I? Down here. Galatians 6 13 says, and not even those who are circumcised keep the law. But they desire to have you circumcised that they may boast in your flesh. I want you to know, even those self-righteous people that you know, <laughs> they ain't doing it. They are not doing it. I want you to know, anybody that's looking down their self-righteous nose at you is not doing it. Is not making it. They don't have it all together. Even the circumcised, even the Pharisees are the ones that crucified Jesus Christ. Yes. So if you catch somebody looking down their self-righteous nose at you, don't get weirded out. They're just stuck in a pharisaical place and probably in a place of pain. Yep. Probably a place, just like you are, going for God with all our heart. They just get a little confused. Okay? In 2 Corinthians 6, 17, it says, Come out from among them. What does it say? Somebody turn that for me, will you? Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not unclean things, and I will receive you. See that? Come out from among them, and don't be messing with unclean things. In other words, we are to reject the world... But we're not to reject our brothers and sisters in Christ that differ with us. Yes. This is important. I would say that in what in the come up out among them is clearly defined in Psalms 1. Yes, it is. That's right. Praise the Lord. Blessed is the man who walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. His delight is in the law of the Lord. Amen. That's exactly right. In, in Romans 12, 1, it says, Be not conformed right. to this world. That's right. Okay? God doesn't want you so smart you become clannish. Right. We've got to watch ourselves. We can become very clannish, okay? He is into transformation. I mean, the Irish. I'm part Irish. Look, the Irish clan. Uh, Indians, they're a bunch of tribes, you know. The 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 uh, uh, Italians, man, they got the gangs and the things, and you know, and New York, the, the the Mexican people, they got the the gang guys. Anyway, whatever nationality you try to figure yeah. out, everybody's got their little clan. Got it. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. praise the Lord. So God doesn't want us so smart we become planets. He wants transformation, change, actual change. They wrote down here with an exclamation point. Yes, it's possible. 
Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. I mean, people really desire change, but they have no concept of how to do it. Well, I hope I give you some how-tos in my preaching here. Oh, hallelujah. Okay. So in Romans 15, 7, I'm going to go there too. So right, right next door. 15, 7, it says, Therefore, receive one another, just as Christ also received us to the glory of God. Let me read that again. Therefore, receive one another as Christ has received us to the glory of God. So when you receive a brother and sister in Christ, you do it to the glory of God. It gives glory to God. Isn't that the coolest thing? Would you, yeah. Would you go turn that off for me? It's kind of a weird sound. Hey! Woo! <laughs> Woo! <laughs> He's talking to you. I thought it was my ears for a while, you know, but it's, it's the thing. Praise the Lord. So, I already did that. Right. Oh, the scripture has and all the device from our brothers. Okay. Oh, yeah, I'm already past all that. Never mind. Okay. <laughs> In Ephesians 2.10, it says, uh, just mute them all. Punch, 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 punch. Make all the lights. Yeah, that was it. Okay. In Ephesians 2.10, it says, we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works. That God is prepared for those who love him. Something like that. Okay, so humans did not invent God. Right. God invented humans. Yes. That good? That's good. I mean the world will say they invented God as an opiate for the people. No, no, no. God invented you. Right. Hallelujah. Okay? God invented us. It's, look at the potential here. Staggering. If God created us in Christ for good works, can you imagine the potential there? Yeah. What good works does he want us to walk in that we haven't even touched yet? That's right. Hallelujah. That's right. Praise the Lord. It's just a, it's just a staggering thing. In fact, in, um, in uh, 2 Corinthians 5.17, it says, we, uh, Therefore, if those who are in Christ are new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. If all things have become new, can you see the potential here? God yeah. wants us to reach our full potential. As yes. um, Joel Osteen say, he wants us to reach our destiny. Uh -huh. He wants to move into our destiny. And each one of you in this place has greatness on the inside of you. You need to tap into the greatness God has put there. Amen. God has put greatness in each one of you. I don't care who you are and what you're doing. There's greatness in there. You need to tap into what God has said in you. Amen. And your greatness might be giving a glass of water to somebody in the name of the Lord. Some of your greatness might be uh, creating a company that puts thousands of people to work. Hallelujah. You don't know what your greatness is yet unless you tap into that thing that God has done. And don't limit God. He yeah. says the, right. the, the whole thing, a brand new creation, old has, the old things have passed away. As far as I'm concerned, that means they did. Because my dad passed away, my mom passed away, and my whole life passed away when I was baptized and I came up a brand new creature in Christ. Yeah. 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 Glory to God. So, in Galatians, the sixth chapter again, sixth chapter again, you should, uh, okay, 14 and 15, it says, But God forbid that I should boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. For in Christ, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision avails anything but a new creation. Isn't that good? Yeah. I like the new creation type thing. Yeah. I like that God invented me. Yeah. yeah. So cool. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Okay, somebody look up for me. Regina, look up this for me, will you? Yeah. Uh, Isaiah 40, 1 through 3. <laughs> This is one of Regina's favorite verses, that's why I gave it to her. Does somebody want Genesis 4.13? Alright. Does somebody want... Nah, let's not do that. Okay. Okay, Regina, go ahead and read that, would you? Comfort, yes, comfort my people, said the Lord. Speak comfort to Jerusalem and cry out to her, that her war warfare is ended and her iniquity is pardoned. For she has received Genesis. from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. Hallelujah. Comfort ye my people. Yes, comfort ye my people. 
Did you read one through three? The voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Hallelujah. Now, um, okay. I got to go back there. Excuse me. Hold that. Hold the TV. <laughs> this is it. This is it. And the second verse it says, Speak comfort to Jerusalem and cry out to her that her warfare is ended, that her iniquity is pardoned. For she had received the Lord's hand double for her sins. Now watch this. Your iniquity is pardoned. That word iniquity, it means, I told you last week, it means um, a moral illness, perversion, crookedness. Okay? And in Genesis 4.13, it says this. And Cain said to the Lord, My punishment is greater than I can bear. That word punishment there is iniquity. My iniquity is more than I can bear. In other words, that perverted, bent, uh, crooked nature was more than he could bear. He came to the realization after killing his brother, after denying it, etc. And then the Lord says, you're going to have to go wander in the desert. He says, "My." he finally had a revelation of what his iniquity was doing. It's perverting his very soul. And it was more than he could bear. And I want you to know, iniquity, your, the perversion of your own heart is more than you can bear. It will destroy you from the inside out. Mm -hmm. If you don't get it under the blood, stay by the cross, stay under the blood, stay in fellowship with God, stay in the Word, begin to speak the Word over your life, know who you are in Christ, know who God is over your life. Hallelujah. That is the thing we need to do. Otherwise, I want you to know, I'm the same as you, and I know the perversion of my own heart, if uh, meditated on just a minute, it will destroy me. Yeah, come on. I know I have re some regrets in my life that if I meditate on for more than 30 seconds, I go belly up. I go belly up. I cannot do it. I, I, there was a guy, there's a guy in Reno who said uh, this whole uh, human trafficking thing, he says he meditates on it all and all the time and he talks to God about it. I says, I can't do that. I said, what I got to do, I got to pray through to the answer and begin to speak that over. Yes. 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 I can't come before God all the time and say, what are you going to do it, God? What are you going to do? This human trafficking is driving me crazy. Yeah. What I have to do, i got to get to a place where I can see by faith what the outcome yes. is right. for my own children, for that human trafficking, yes. for all yes. the evils I see in the world. Yeah. I have got to, in my spirit, somehow pray through to that place where I have faith yes. yeah, right. and I can speak that yes. over those things. Yes. See, we need to pray strong prayer. Yes. Yes. Right. Strong yes. prayers and yes. prophesy those yes. things. Yes. Prophesy, Son of Man. Can these bones live? Breath come into those bones. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. That whole iniquity thing, that freaked me out when it said that my punishment is more than I can bear. In Isaiah 53, it says, He was bruised for our iniquities. Mm -hmm. He was bruised. The chastisement of our yes. peace was upon Him. When you get cleansed of your iniquity, that crookedness in your soul, all of a sudden peace comes on you and you begin to live for Christ. You begin to live and you come before God without guilt, without shame, without anything like that. You come right into the presence yeah. of God and say, Oh God, thank you God for cleansing yes. me. Thank you God for setting me free yes. from my right. own life. Hallelujah. I don't care what your life looks like at this point in time. Right. That is the truth. Yes. That's, That's the right. truth. You've got to move into the truth of who you are. That's right. Anybody can uh, state the obvious. Yes. <laughs> you know, you can look in the mirror and state the obvious all day long. Yeah, you sorry sucker. You are uh, you hopeless hypocrite. Uh, uh, uh. You know, you can blaspheme your name all day long, but it takes faith to say, no, yes. I am the righteousness of God in Christ. I am born again. Old things are passed away. All things are become new. And I will say that until it's true. Amen. Hallelujah. I got a little carried away there. Okay, so in Isaiah 40, the 27th verse says, Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord, and my just claim is passed over by my God? Have you not known, have you not heard, the everlasting God, the Lord, yes. the creator of the ends of the earth, never faints nor is weary? His understanding is unsearchable. Listen to this. He gives power to the weak, and to those who have no might, he increases strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary. And young men shall utterly fall, but those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. 
They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Amen. And that word wait is, uh, is a word that says to be expectant of. Mm -hmm. To hope expectantly for. Those who wait expectantly for God will renew their strength. He says, you don't just wait on Lord. Ah, I'm waiting on you, God. I wish you'd hurry up. <laughs> yeah, right? No, it's expecting. It's expecting God to show up. Yes. Those who wait on the Lord. Yes. What does it say? It says, um, uh, those who come to God must believe that He is and that He is a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. Mm -hmm. Here we are waiting for God. <clears throat> we know He's going to reward us. Why? Because we're diligently seeking Him. Yes, not because our lives are perfect at this point in time, right. but we are not going back. Right. We are not stopping. We are not giving up. We are not shutting right. up. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And I'm not going to let my emotions get my thumb in my mouth and twirl my hair so that, oh, poor me, poor me, poor me, poor me, poor me, poor me, poor me. You can get off on that. Yeah. And you can dig yourself a hole so deep it's hard to crawl out. That's right. Knock that crap off. That's right. Come out of that emotional thing. Change the way you think. Renew your mind to the Word of God. Why do I say this? It's me. Hallelujah. We are wired. We are wired for, for this whole song, uh, Isaiah 47, 27 through 31. We are wired to seek the Lord. We are wired to have strength for weakness. We are wired for that stuff. In fact, we are wired for love. Yes. Fear is learned. Yes. Blame is learned. Condemnation is learned. Once you know kids do stuff wrong, they don't care. They don't even know it's wrong until you tell them. That's right. You know, they can be slapping their brother all the time. Oh, look, he's crying. <laughs> until you tell them different. See what I'm saying? We are wired. We are wired for love. To see God, the all-powerful, the omniscient creator, the everlasting one who gives power to the weak and those who have no might increases strength. To wait, wait for, expect it, hope. Hallelujah. When we were born again, God brought us into His original intent. When you were born again, you were brought into the potential of being who God originally intended man to be. Truly human. When you are filled with Christ, you become truly human. Okay? We need to reconceptualize Get a concept of what God has created us to be. Yes. Why He created people. What Jesus has done. And the overcoming power of His Holy Spirit within us. We need to reconceptualize what our thinking is. We need to get a concept. Reconceptualize your life. Think about what you're thinking about. <clears throat> Don't just think whatever comes into your head. For crying out loud, you'll drive yourself insane. That's right. Reconceptualize what you're thinking all the time and start thinking the right thoughts. Think about what you're thinking. Otherwise, your emotions will stay the way they are and you will be sorry. Not only will people, yeah, not yeah. only you will know, <laughs> other people will know too. That's right. Yeah, hallelujah. Yeah, when you're upset, somebody knows. You know, and then somebody next to you knows, and then the whole neighborhood knows after a while. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. We're having a breakdown in our lives. <laughs> Remember that? Oh, Lord. Okay, so in Isaiah 41, 10 through 13 says, Fear not, for I am with you. All right. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Behold, behold all those who are incensed against you. The guys that, that you're worried about, the, the guys coming after you, the men in white coats or the government or whomever is coming after you, watch this. Behold those who are incensed against you shall be ashamed and disgraced. They shall be as nothing as those who strive with you shall perish. You shall seek them and not find them. Those who contend with you, those who war against you shall be as nothing as a non-existent thing. Woo! For I, the Lord your God, will hold your right hand, saying to you, Fear not, I will help you. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. You need to say those things to yourself every once in a while. Yes. I wrote down here, No worries, bro. Amen. <laughs> no worries. You gotta say that. You gotta say that to yourself all the time. Oh, no worries, man. That's right. Don't worry. No 
words. Worry about nothing. <clears throat> all things. Give thanks. Amen. Give thanks for all things. Hallelujah. We, the people of God, are wired for love. Fear and prejudice are learned. Why well, that was a word I wrote? Prejudice. P R E D G I D I S. <laughs> That's bad. <laughs> okay. Just in Ephesians, just for a second. Okay, Ephesians, the fourth chapter. Ephesians 4, um, 31 and 32. This is good. It says, Let all bitterness and wrath and yes. anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. Listen to this. And be kind to one another, <laughs> tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ has forgiven you. That means that person you're looking at in the mirror. As God has forgiven you, so you should forgive him. I am really, really serious about that. You need to forgive yourself probably more than anybody else. Because if less you've forgiven yourself, you probably can't forgive anybody else. That's right. And you'll begin to hold things against other people. And you, you'll start to destroy yourself. Hallelujah. Now, we overcome evil with good, right? Uh, Joshua 1 9. What does Joshua 1 9 say? Uh, be not afraid, neither be dismayed. Yes. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Yeah. I could give you 15 scriptures about those things, okay? These things I have spoken unto you, this, that in this world you might have peace. In this world you will have tribulation. Be of good cheer. I've overcome the world. That's right. That's right. This whole thing is about. It's about Christ. You know this yeah. thing, and I, I, I found this thing out, Regina, I saw it on the TV, I think it was, uh, whoever it was, can't get his name right now, but anyway, he was talking about musing. I said this on Wednesday night. He's talking about Joseph Prince, yeah. He was talking about musing about something. <laughs> you guys don't like Joseph Prince? I love him. I'm sorry. I really don't care. You know, <laughs> some, you know, whoever you don't like, you need to get over it. Yeah. All right. <laughs> so, so he's talking about musing. Musing means to think about, to meditate on. We muse over the things of God. We muse about the scriptures. We go. We meditate on the scriptures. The word amuse is is to um, uh, to be to be um, uh, entertained. To have yes. somebody make you laugh. Yes. Now it's the opposite of musing. Okay. A muse means not to muse. In other words, somebody else is making you think. Mm -hmm. Somebody else is taking your mind and causing something to happen in you. Entertainment is somebody else bringing you something else. And if you remain in that place of, of amusement all the time, pretty soon your, uh, your very being will come jaded and you won't be able to be satisfied anymore. If all you're looking for is amusement, then after a while amusement won't work. You'll have to go more corrupt, more goofed up, et cetera, et cetera. Amen. In other words, you can't get any satisfaction, but if you muse upon the Word of God and sit and think sometimes about God and who He is and how wonderful He is, pretty soon you're built up on the inside yes. rather than torn down from without. And satisfaction in the presence of God is fullness of joy. Joy doesn't come and go. Joy comes and stays. Satisfaction comes and stays. There's something that happens inside of you that totally changes your whole life. I just, you get off on that? So this week, not so much be amused, but muse on the things of God. Find out what you're pondering about. What are you pondering on today? If you're pondering on something that doesn't make sense, doesn't go along with the Word of God, quit pondering on that. That's right. Ponder on something else. It's okay. You can actually do that. <laughs> yeah. No kidding. I used to think that I could. No, I can't change my mind. Yeah, I'm thinking this. I just can't not not think it. Yes, you can. Okay. Praise the Lord. God isn't stuck with you. He adopted you. He picked you out of a crowd. <laughs> Isaiah 40. You've got to go back there. I'm going to end with this. Isaiah, the 40th chapter. I forgot this verse. This is a good one. And I gave this verse to somebody this week. 
but I wanted to read it today. It says in the 10th verse, it says, Behold, the Lord God shall come with a strong hand. His arm will rule for him. Behold, his reward is with him, and his recompense or his work is before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms and carry them in his bosom and shall gently lead those that are with the young. Lord, we thank you. We thank you, God, for you, you gather us and hold us close to your heart. Yes. That's who you are. Yes. That's what you are. Mm -hmm. And Lord, forgive us for thinking anything different than That's you are right. good and you are powerful and you are still God. And you're still on the throne. We love you, God. Down deep inside of us, we love you. And we set ourselves before you. Father, have your way in our lives this whole week. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Would you stand up and pray over that? Please? We're having communion today, too, so wait a second. Okay. Oh, Lord, we... We're so thankful that we're able to get back what you've given us. Yes. Yeah. Oh, you're Hallelujah. so, so yeah. good to us. Yes. And we're just truly thankful. Mm -hmm. Jesus yes. Name. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> oh, I want to do something. You guys in a hurry? No. I got I got another church service. Oh, we got time. Oh, no. We're <laughs> five minutes <laughs> late. I guess there isn't here anyway. We're early. Okay. Yeah, we're ready to early. That's not about the second service. Okay, well, I'll read this right after this. Then it'll make sense why. You want me to give it? Okay. I found Sam Kellogg. He's 90. Yeah. It says he was related to Serena, Renee, Beverly, and Jenny. Let me get you Anybody remember uh, Sam and Jenny Kellogg? Uh, you were just a baby. Sounds familiar. Anyway, I found them. I asked the internet. I said, find Sam Kellogg. And I looked through like a few. <laughs> but there he was in Old Oldsburg, Oldsburg Kansas. Because I used to, no, he lived in Greenleaf. Thank Greenleaf's you. right there. I found him. When about 40 years ago, I came to Fernley, and I came to this church, and they were going to close the door. It was a Assembly of God church. And Sam and Jenny, that day, kept the doors open just to have another service. And that's how Living Faith is here. Yay. Hallelujah. Yeah. Isn't that a good story? So I found him. He's 90. Huh? Like yes, he's the one. So I gotta get a picture of him. I'll, 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 I'll get a picture of him and show you guys what I'm talking about. <laughs> Sam Kellogg. Oh. Sam and Jenny Kellogg. She was a great big lady. And he was this, this, about 6'4", weighed about 125 pounds. <laughs> great big ears. Hair just stuck up like that. He's a funniest looking guy. He's a Norman Rockwell guy. Yes. He was a painting. I'm serious. But uh, anyway... He was a wonderful man. Just a powerful, wonderful guy. Praise the Lord. So I need a, some bread. Can he, oh, it's in there. I knew that. Let's say you want mine? Yeah. No, I got it. I got mine out. I figured out how to do this. The first day we did this? Yeah. <laughs> didn't happen for me. <laughs> did not. More time for yeah, that's great. So... so Lord, we are thankful for yes. this bread represents your broken body. And Lord, we want a lot to do with you. Yes. You yes. say if we don't eat your flesh and drink your blood, we have nothing to do with you. Yes. So today, Lord, we acknowledge that your body was broken for us. Yes. Broken for our healing, broken for our, uh, for our craziness. Yes. And Lord, we receive right now what you had in mind for us, and we remember you. Yes. And remember your broken body in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, you said this cup is a, the blood of the new covenant. Yes. So we are not stuck in the old covenant, Lord. No. 
we are not. If there's nothing wrong with it, it there wouldn't have been any, a new one. So there was a great need for Jesus for you to come. Yes. You shed your blood for the forgiveness of our sins. Forgive us our sins right now, Lord, as we yes. partake of this. Because we remember your death until you come. Amen. So right before you leave, I'll read this little short thing. You'll like it, isn't it? There it is. There it is. Okay. Most of you have heard this before, but those of you who have it, thank you. I'll wait until everybody gets here. Everybody's got theirs. Yay, thank you. Thank you. He was born in an obscure village, the child of a peasant woman. He grew up in still another village where he worked as a carpenter shop until he was 30. Then for three years he was an itinerant preacher. He never wrote a book, never held an office, he never had a family or owned a he never had a family or owned a house. He didn't go to college. Hey, sit down over there, woman. <laughs> She's trying. <laughs> sorry, sorry. So anyway, he never traveled 200 miles from the place where he was born. He did none of the things that usually associate with greatness. He had no credentials but himself. He was only 33 when public opinion turned against him. His friends ran away. He, turned, he was turned over to his enemies and went through a mockery of a trial, was nailed to a cross, between two thieves. When he was dying, his executioners gambled for his clothing, the only property he had then on earth. And when he was dead, he was laid in a borrowed grave through the pity of a friend. Nineteen centuries have come and gone, and today he is a central figure of the human race, the leader of mankind's progress. All the armies that ever marched, all the navies that ever sailed, all the parliament, parliaments that ever sat, all the kings who ever reigned put together have not affected the life of man on earth as much as this one solitary life. Wow. Hallelujah. Yeah. Lord, we thank you yeah. that we are like you. Yes. And we, you have greatness in each one of us, Lord. And we thank you that we will shine in this world as the lights of God. In Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Amen.